Today, I'm testing one-star reviews from some of the world's most famous chefs. As a cookbook author myself, one-star reviews are usually inaccurate and can feel pretty harsh. And as the video goes on, the reviews are gonna get worse and worse. So we'll test these recipes, and if they're proven wrong, I have to leave an honest five-star review. We're kicking the video off with Uncle Gordon Ramsay. He's a beloved internet chef, but also scares the crap out of everyone on his TV show, Hell's Kitchen. I think he's probably a teddy bear at heart, but the one-star our review had the audacity to say, he stepped missing in a recipe, campy lobacter salmonella and clostridium alert. I'm not sure what two of those are. Someone is asleep at the wheel. For the Moroccan chicken, they left out the step where chicken is pan fried on the stove for a while before it's roasted. I noticed and questioned this, but followed the recipe exactly as written. Sure enough, the chicken was raw. A new cook would have missed this and the diners would get really sick from eating raw chicken. Ramsey is cashing in on his television presence, but sadly the publisher isn't proofing these recipes. There are a lot of good recipes out there. I'm staying away from this guy. One star. I mean, I definitely don't wanna get sick. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Then wash the baby carrots, cutting any larger ones in half lengthwise. Place in a large roasting pan with the onions, with the instructions saying red onions cut into eight wedges. Drizzle with one tablespoon of olive oil and sprinkle over one tablespoon of Ross El Hanout until evenly coated. I had no idea what that was. Basically cumin, cloves, cayenne, ginger. It's a combo of the usual spices. Mm. It smells very warm and earthy. I'm really excited for this recipe. Just hope I don't get sick. Place in the oven for 10 minutes. Next, pour chicken stock into a small pan, place over medium high heat and bring to a boil. Put the couscous into a bowl with a little bit of salt and pepper. Pour the hot stock over it, cover it with plastic wrap and set aside to absorb the liquid. Okay, now we have to score the chicken skin with a sharp knife. Okay, so I can actually see where the reviewer might have been a little bit confused with this because usually in America at least, skin on chicken, it comes with bones. I actually had to ask the butcher to remove the bones because this one just said skin on, it didn't say bone in. Then season with salt and pepper and sprinkle over half tablespoon of the remaining Ross El Canute. Then we cut each zucchini into quarters lengthwise and then into two inch lengths, sprinkling the remaining half tablespoon of the spice. Remove the pan from the oven and add the zucchini and chickpeas. Okay, I have to say, I pulled this out of the oven and it smells amazing, super savory. Like, I can't wait to eat this. Place the chicken breast on top and drizzle the remaining one tablespoon of olive oil. Add water to the bottom of the pan and return to the oven on high shelf for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, uncover the couscous and fluff it up with a fork. Wow, I never knew how easy it was to make couscous. Stir in the cilantro, then add lemon juice, salt, and pepper to taste. So fluffy. I'm gonna give this a try real quick. Mm. After that's done, remove the roasting pan from the oven. All right, I got my thermometer. It should register at 165 for chicken. It registered at 122.5. Now this is where kind of your judgment comes in. If it's not cooked, definitely put it back in the oven and cook it longer until it's cooked. Chicken in the UK might just be smaller. It didn't specify. So I'm gonna put mine in for another five minutes. Remove the roasting pan from the oven. Oh yeah, much better and sprinkle with pistachio and rose petals if using. Bring to the table and serve straight from the pan. This is such a beautiful and balanced looking plate. And now I gotta give everything a try. Cook to perfection. Let's get everything in one bite. Mmm, that spice is so good. Whoa, but it's like earthy and warm. You get notes of cinnamon, it's a little bit spicy. And then with the couscous and the vegetable, it's just cooked, it's not mushy, so you get that nice little crunch mm. still. I'm definitely making this again. And now I'm ready for my review. Loved the Moroccan chicken and couscous. A super balanced meal with such interesting flavors. Would expect nothing less from Gordon Ramsay. Ras El Hanout is my new favorite spice. Also didn't get sick. I used common sense to cook the chicken thoroughly. Five stars. Keep watching till the end because we have another celebrity chef on the brink of getting canceled and some of the worst reviews yet. Next up we have modern day Julia Child, Ina Garten. How dare they say something bad about Ina Garten she is so lovely, always cooking for Jeffrey and that gingerly smile. This book is her cook like a pro. She's tossing vegetables while smiling for a book cover. Like, 
And she's just fabulous. Not gonna lie, I want her life. But let's see what the one star reviewers had to say. Buy this book and get dumped. My girlfriend dumped me right after I bought her this book and I'm not saying it's the main reason, but I'm sure it's not a coincidence. One star. <laughs> I hope I don't get dumped now. Through Ina Garten, I have learned how to make a great chocolate pudding cake, baked eggs, sophisticated cocktails, how to entertain and set a table. She's a joy to watch on her cooking show until this book, Cook Like a Pro. And I have all her other books. This time around, the book is filled with useless recipes. Seriously, Ina, would you really make a celery root and chickpea puree for your guests? I'm a seasoned cook, but I have no idea what shakshuka is. I hesitate to criticize my cooking guru, so I will agree with another another review who stated that Ina Garten must not have written this book. If so, I hope she writes another good one like all the others in the past. Sorry, but it's not a worthwhile book. One star. So here's the said celery root and chickpea puree. Um, In here, she said in the winter, I make a lot of roasted meat. I like to serve something creamy and comforting with it. And there's nothing wrong with great mashed potatoes, but this is a great alternative. With the exception of the Italian Parmesan cheese and a good stock, this could be a good vegan alternative. But she also also states that she has no idea what a shakshuka is, so let's make that. It's basically eggs poached in a tomato sauce uh, with peppers and onions, and it originated from Northern Africa, as she said. Let's just imagine this as a Hampton-style shakshuka. So we start by preheating the oven to 375 degrees. Then we're gonna heat the oil in a large 12-inch oven-proof saute pan over medium heat. There was a lot of chopping involved. We had to chop up onions, fennel, bell pepper, poblano, and jalapeno pepper. I'm gonna dump that all into the pan and cook it over medium heat for about 10 to 12 minutes, stirring occasionally until the vegetables are tender and then they start to brown. Stir in the garlic and paprika and cook for one minute. Ooh, the addition of the smoked paprika just gave it such a savory, delicious aroma. Next, we're gonna add a can of diced tomatoes, strained tomatoes, two teaspoons of salt, and one teaspoon of black pepper. Bring it all to a boil, lower the heat, and simmer for 15 minutes until the sauce thickens, stirring occasionally. Off the heat, we'll carefully break the eggs in one at a time into a small bowl and slide them into the vegetable mixture. Crumble the feta around the eggs, sprinkle it with more salt and pepper, and then we bake it off for 15 to 20 minutes until the egg whites are firm, but the yolks are still runny. This is so beautiful already. And I'm gonna put my timer at 10 minutes. I thought I knew better than Ina, but I actually don't. I don't claim to be a pro. I thought it would only take 10 minutes. It actually took 13 to 14 to look like this with the whites fully set. So the lady was right. Sprinkle with parsley and serve from the pan with some pita bread. Gotta make sure I get the whole egg in there, unbroken. Feta adds like this nice saltiness to it. Mm. The eggs to mm. me are perfectly cooked. The mm. vegetables are very tender and the hint of fennel in there gives it this interesting anise taste to it that I actually really enjoy. I'm ready to write my review. I love it when Ina cooks for Jeffrey and I also love how she takes something really ordinary it makes it really special. The secret ingredient is always love. I have a few of her books and they're very easy to follow using ingredients I normally wouldn't think to try. The Barefoot Contessa strikes again. Her shakshuka recipe was delicious with her signature Hampton spin written all over it. Isn't it? Fabulous. Five stars. Next up, we have Rachel Ray, who was known as Food Network Sweetheart, and she's also best known for her 30 Minute Meal series. So of course we have classic Rachel Ray's 30 Minute Meals book with a lot of cute photos from her show, her travels. That's the Rachel Ray I grew up with. But of course, there were many harsh critics. I read a lot of the reviews for this book and after reading them, I decided to give it a try. So that means they were good. I was so excited when it arrived, but then I was not so excited when I opened it. I was very much looking forward to the comfort foods and easy no fuss recipes. Not in this book, folks. Putinesca pizza, tomato, olive, caper, and anchovy. Ick. These recipes are all artsy fartsy. Each and every recipe has just off the wall ingredients. At the end, she says, thanks for reading. Have a great day. One star. But didn't you read all the reviews that said all the good things about this book? So let's see if this is artsy fartsy. We have outside in bacon cheeseburger. Chicken in the oven, roasted ratatouille 
chewy vegetables, balsamic pork tenderloins. There's even spicy chicken tacos, pretty basic. They're interesting, I don't want them to be too basic. And then we have the Putinesca pizza with tomato, olive, capers, and anchovy. I've never had it in a pizza, so let's give it a try. So we're gonna start by preheating the oven to 425 degrees. Then in a small skillet over medium heat, saute garlic and crushed red pepper, and EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. She also says two tablespoons, which is twice around the pan. It's a good tip. Until the garlic begins to sizzle, add anchovy fillets and use the back of a wooden spoon to help melt the anchovies into the EVOO. Fish sauce is also made from anchovies. Just saying. And like she says, the anchovies do break up quite a bit. Add tomatoes and stir to coat evenly with flavored oil. Ooh, it smells really garlicky and very umami-ish with the anchovies. Next, place pizza crust on the pan. She actually calls for boboli, and I don't know what is more 90s than that. Then sprinkle evenly with tomato mixture, spreading it into the edges. Huh, so it's like a chunky sauce, not really. Add the parsley, capers, and olives in the same manner. Run your fingers through the cheese in the sack to fluff it up, then cover the pie with a light layer of the cheese right to the edges. Okay, I gotta make sure that the ingredients at the bottom still peek out, which I think it does. I actually like this idea. This way the cheese will hold everything down. Place pie in oven directly on center rack. She says eight, but no more than 12. I'm gonna do 10. Ah, all right, so this is definitely a flatbread pizza type. This looks incredible. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. All right, now let's give it a try. It smells super good. Just like she said, too much cheese will make the crust soggy, and the crust indeed is not soggy. Mm. Mm. I was a little skeptical about the tomatoes not being very saucy the way that traditional pizza sauce was, but this gives it a very tomatoey flavor and it blends really well with the Kalamata olives and the brininess of the capers and the cheese on top is just the perfect amount. Mm. I'm ready to write my review. I love puttanesca pasta, so naturally I knew this pizza version would be good and it was the perfect book opener. Easy and simple. I didn't expect this Rachel Ray all occasion cookbook to contain easy, comfortable foods, but I can't wait to try things like meatball patty melt, you won't be single for long vodka cream pasta, lol to that title, or the outside in bacon cheeseburger. And as an almost 20 year old cookbook, it's the most loving way to throw back to the 2000s. Yum o. Oh. Five stars. Next up, I have David Chang, probably the most hated celebrity chef at the moment. And I originally was gonna do his Momofuku cookbook, but I think I'm gonna save that for a different video, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. The back says the founder of Momofuku cooks at home, and that means mostly ignoring recipes, using tools like the microwave, and taking inspiration from his mom to get a great dinner done fast. Sounds pr pretty simple enough. And similar to the current state of his affairs, this book was also met with a a lot of criticism. Horrible layout that makes this book unreadable. Skimming around is even hard. It feels like an unorganized blog, not a cookbook. The colors hurt the eyes and make certain text illegible. Yellow print on a white page, really? They were obviously trying to be clever, but failed to be artistic in my opinion and made the book useless. Besides that, recipes I saw didn't even have measurements. What? One star. <laughs> I see what they mean. The book is written in a very casual and colloquial style, and it's conversational. It would be nice to have the ingredients laid out. In terms of the yellow text, most of the recipes are written in black. The tips are written in yellow, but it's definitely legible. But the worst review of all, waste of time. What is the point of a cookbook with almost no recipes? Don't mention microwave in your title if that's not your focus. I'm glad I got this through my library and didn't waste money on this worthless cookbook. One star. Did it say microwave on here? Okay, cooking at home or how I learned to stop worrying about recipes and love my microwave. I don't immediately assume that it's a microwave cookbook. Book. I can see that there are recipes on the stove. I also saw that he had a whole chapter dedicated to the microwave. Things I love to microwave, which is kind of funny from like a James Beard awarded chef. But I think the one that I'm gonna make is the chawan mushi. Basically a Japanese light steamed egg custard in the microwave, this is gonna be a little bit challenging. In a microwave safe bowl, combine three eggs, a little over half a cup of dashi or chicken broth that's been seasoned with some kind of umami ingredient, such as hondashi, MSG, or mushroom powder, and sliced scallions. Use chopstick to mix everything together until the mixture is uniform. It's all in the wrist. 
I probably got too many air bubbles in there, but that's okay. Cover tightly, making sure there's no room for air to escape, and cook until set about 12 minutes at 30 to 40% power. Top with extra sliced scallions, eat it warm or let it chill and eat it cold. So the gray stuff that you see on top here was from the umami powder. So the texture does look pretty silky smooth and custardy here. I'm actually quite surprised. The texture is somewhere between like soft tofu and you know those steamed custard eggs that you get at Korean barbecue. But I think it's funny how he has like kind of a backup here. Do some experimentation in your microwave and come up with your perfect ratio in case it doesn't work out. <laughs> This book was an interesting read and definitely had an unconventional layout, but forces the reader to thoroughly read through the recipe before attempting. I guess you could say efficient, but such a guy's way of explaining things. Plenty of microwavable recipes, and I even made eggs in the microwave. It didn't explode and turned out pretty good. I'll just be sure to add some Laogan Ma chili crunch on top next time. Five stars. <laughs> Finally, we have Jamie Oliver, probably one of the most unfairly hated celebrity chefs on the internet. I don't know why. But today I'm gonna be reviewing his latest simple one pan wonders cookbook. I myself am not familiar with his recipes, but I know he's quite popular in England. Like his food must be good in order for him to be this popular or famous. I really tried hard to like this book. This is the first time I've bought a Jamie Oliver book, although I've watched his programs for years. I've now tried a handful of different recipes in here and every single one of them has been a disappointment. Also, just to point out, cooking a big piece of meat directly on the shelf in your oven does not mean it's a one pan meal. That is now a pan and my whole oven I need to clean. So, no thank you. <laughs> there are far too many variations of the same dish. I didn't need five shakshuka recipes and 15 recipes using fresh lasagna sheets. I found the Madras meatballs were inventive, but then in practice, the rice was in incredibly bland because there wasn't any seasoning or flavors for it to soak in and the suggestion was four whole chilies but I ended up just binning the chilies rather than putting them on my plate because they were an unpleasant heat with bland rice. Binning, I guess it means throw away. Make skin peel, didn't hydrate, just the opposite. I don't even know what she was referring to. Never heard of some ingredients, not at all appealing or useful recipes. One star, no useful to me one star. I guess for the most part, they just didn't care for the recipes. A lot of these recipes look pretty good to me, but the one that we're gonna attempt today is the giant madra spiced meatballs, like she mentioned. Is that rice really bland? We'll find out. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees, then rub a roasting pan with a little bit of olive oil. We'll then drain the lentils well, then scrunch it with ground lamb, curry paste, and a pinch of sea salt and black pepper until they're really well mixed. So for the curry paste, he calls for madra's curry, and that probably is really popular in England, but here in the States, I was able to find Madras curry sauce, which is not the same as the paste. The paste is like doubly, triply as concentrated. So if you're making this recipe, make sure you look for the paste where it infuses it with a lot of flavor, something the reviewer said was lacking. Oh, and it's super aromatic. I like how he says to scrunch them all together. I'm just gonna do it with my hands. Equally divide them into six, shape into giant balls, and sit them in the pan. Prick and add four red chilies and roast for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna remove the pan from the oven and take the chilies out for a moment. Sprinkle the rice around the balls. Pour in two cups of boiling water and poke in frozen spinach. So it's really interesting that the meatballs didn't have any binding like eggs or like breadcrumbs in there. Place the chilies back on top, cover tightly with aluminum foil, and return to the oven for 20 minutes. Pull out the pan, Ooh. lift up the foil, and use the fork to stir the spinach into the rice. It's actually kind of soupy, so I'm a little bit worried. Recover and return to the oven for a final 20 minutes or until the rice is fluffy. Now we're gonna uncover the pan. They fluff up pretty good. Brush the top of each meatball with one teaspoon of mango chutney. Mango chutney is just like chili jam. Fluff up the rice and spinach again. Season to perfection, then finely slice and sprinkle over some of the cooked chili to taste. Serve with dollops of yogurt and extra mango chutney if you like. Let's see if the rice is really bland. You're supposed to serve it with some yogurt. It's actually quite flavorful and a little spicy from all that chili. I am very curious about the meatballs being moist. He likes his chili jam mm. and chutneys. I don't know if it's lamb, but it's not dry. You get the creamy texture from the lentils and it's actually quite nice. The curry paste definitely gives it like a spicy kick. And I'm not saying like heat spice, like aromatic spice, and it's very flavorful. The yogurt helps to cool it down. The chutney gives you sweetness. I think 
I'm ready for my review. Poor Jamie Oliver gets so much hate on the internet. Made the Madras curry meatballs in one pan in the oven and it was a hit. I was scared there would be too much spinach, but it cooked down with the rice and was perfect. The rice and meatballs were so flavorful and my oven did in fact remain clean. I found a few other recipes I want to try like the lemongrass chicken, green shakshuka looks interesting, and his lasagna sheet pasta hack. Love me a good hack. Five stars. But if you like this video, go check out my one star YouTuber recipe video and let me know what you think there too.